Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 Talk, where we will be talking about field service and how that works out of the box with Dynamics 365 for sales. Now, before we dive in, um, my name is Dion Taylor. You can follow me on Twitter at D365Goddess, or you can just go ahead and take a look at my blog site as well at d 365 goddess.com now you can see that I'm already logged into the field service app and I can do that obviously by clicking on Dynamics 365 and then clicking on that app and again I've already logged in and the second thing that I've done is then I changed the area to actually go to my sales area where I can then very easily navigate to opportunities now for this particular demo I already created an opportunity and walked through the entire process from opportunity to a quote to an order and an agreement because I didn't want to take up a lot of time with you guys watching me enter data in that all of those different um, entities and records so let's go ahead and open up the opportunity that I've created for this and that's actually my maintenance agreement, which is four times an oil change. So let's go ahead and load that in here. So you can see here that we are actually in a field service opportunity form, which is called the field service information form. Uh, and the reason for that is because I actually have a field on here that is called order type, and that really determines what type of opportunity it is. It could be an item-based opportunity, which is just a regular quote-unquote sales opportunity that we're used to. We can have a service maintenance-based opportunity, which is that field service opportunity, which allows me to actually configure the opportunity so that I can sell maintenance contracts. So think about a maintenance contract, like in this particular example, I'm gonna send uh, uh, a technician on site four times during a time period and, and that's the agreement or contract that I'm actually selling to the customer. And then lastly we can also have a work-based order type and that is related to project service automation where we can go ahead and tie this to a project and then we can go ahead and, and work that out as well so that will be my second video again this one is just based on how field service and the sales module work together um, very nicely out of the box so <clears throat> as you can see you can just go ahead and fill out any information on this form this form is also configurable so you can add fields and you can remove fields uh, but if I navigate to opportunity lines you can now see that we actually have service based lines that we can add to these opportunities as well so obviously that is a, uh, a big change right from the quote-unquote regular item based type of opportunities so you can just go ahead and add opportunity lines um, directly from within here. The button is not here right now because this opportunity is already won, but that's where you would add that. And then of course, if you wanted to add some product based lines, you can do that from here as well. Now let's take a look what that service baseline looks like. Again, you can see that I have a field service form for my opportunity lines as well. Uh, that gives me some different types of information that I can enter here. Obviously, I can put in a description. Uh, I can put in what the start and the end date of that agreement is, right? And then the system will automatically calculate the total duration of that. Then, of course, the service account price list and the estimated value of this particular opportunity as well. Now, once all of that has been filled out, we can go ahead and navigate to and, or create, actually, the quote. So I actually have that quote already created, so let's take a look at that. When we create that quote, again, you will have a plus button right over here uh, that allows you to create that quote. And again, a lot of that information from the opportunity, just like we're used to with item-based type of opportunities, uh, will be copied over, right? So the name, the opportunity, potential customer price list, etc. Now, 
if I move to, if I navigate to quote lines, again, we'll see that the service based line from the opportunity has been brought over and uh, to the quote. So now let's take a look at that quote line. Now this quote line has already been configured, but I'm going to show you what exactly I did. So again, for the quote line, we also have a field service form. And that's why you're seeing some different fields, fields such as right the uh, actual start date, the end date, the duration, the services price list here, and then we have some prices. And this is actually being filled in by the application when I'm creating my booking setups. And, and those are really the nuts and bolts of the agreement that will be created once this quote has been marked as one. So let's take a look at how we're going to set that up. So normally this would be empty and you can just click on this, add a new quote booking setup. And then this form will load where I can put in, right? What is the name of it? What is the work order type? I actually see notice now that I have this field on the form twice. So I probably want to take that off. But what that means is that once this particular quote goes into an order, which will then also create the actual agreement. Um, once that agreement has then been created, do I want to auto generate the work orders for those, uh, for those, for that agreement? And that is pure, uh, purely functionality of the maintenance agreement uh, or agreements, I should say, in Dynamics 365 for field service. So you can set it there as well. So before we do anything, and at this particular point, we would not have selected an incident uh, type as of yet, right? We just populated some of these fields, then we saved this quote booking setup. And then the first thing that we want to do after saving that quote book, quote booking setup is we want to set the booking reoccurrence. And the booking reoccurrence is really how often are we going to send somebody out there, right? So in this particular case, we said we're going to do four oil changes over the course of a year. So here we can set what our recurrence pattern is going to be. In this case, I actually selected monthly, but obviously you can also select daily, weekly, or yearly. And then depending on what your repeat is, you're going to actually have some different options in the repeat by. Now, since I selected monthly, I can now repeat this by either a particular day of the week or a day of the month. Now, in this example, I actually said, I want this to occur the, uh, on a day of the week, the first day of every weekday of every third month, right? So. Again, you can configure this however you want, obviously. Then I want to put in a start date and then I can put in if I want to have no end date, uh, maybe an end date after a number of specified occurrences, or I can end it by a particular date. Or I can set my custom dates for this as well. Obviously, because I'm saying, hey, do this monthly on the first day of the week or, or the first weekday of the week, right? Every three months, the system is automatically create, going to create those dates based on that. So once you've done that, you can just go ahead and make sure that you actually save that quote booking setup record. And once you've done that, that's where you can go ahead and now add the incident. And, and this is really then looking at the incident types that you have in your instance. And the other thing that you want to make sure of is that your incident type is actually configured to pull the products and the services over to that particular agreement, right? So that's what this yes means. So you got to make sure that your incident type is configured that way because otherwise you will not see that. So again, you just put in your incident type and then a name and an estimated duration. And then you can just go ahead and save that. Now, then after a couple of minutes, it will actually bring over this products, the services, and you can see here the service tasks as well. And once that's done, then you can take a look at your margins, right? Your estimated margins. 
yeah, estimated margin per work order. Remember we said we would go there four times. This is also what shows you the number of work orders that are related to this particular quote booking setup in agreement, right? What is your product estimated revenue service in total? What is your product cost, service cost, and estimated total cost? And then again, here are your margins. So once that is done, you can go back to your quote. I'm going back to my quote. I have everything set up. What you will see here is that the total amount will automatically be updated from those values that you just saw earlier, right? Based on the total amount of work orders, the total price, etc. All of that will be directly from within here. Once you're done with all of that and the customer comes back and says, yes, um, this is fine with me. I want to go ahead and move forward. And by the way, in the meantime, you can actually send a quote summary as a PDF if you wanted to. This is based off of Word template. And again, once that quote has been accepted, there will be a button here that says close as one, I believe and that would actually create then that order. And here we see that we are currently on the order for that maintenance agreement, which is a four time oil change. And now if we go to order lines, this is where we see that the agreement has been created automatically. Now, when the agreement gets created automatically, it will also be set to active immediately. And here you go. This one is actually canceled again because I've already set this one up. Um, by, but out of the box, it will actually be set as active. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe uh, on YouTube, but also on my blog if you want to get notified when a new blog post comes out. Again, thank you so much for watching and until next time.